Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, let me quickly. Okay, do you want to say something to introduce or something, or like sh shall I just go ahead? I think you can go ahead. All right. So hi everyone. I'm my name is Praveen. I'm originally from Chennai, India. Currently, I am living and working in the UK in London right now. And I guess I and Surabhi share the same time zone. Yeah, that's and uh, right. So today we will be looking at the most hyped language, which is worth the hype. It is React JS. It is a library of JavaScript. And okay, to say quickly about me, I'm a full stack JavaScript specialist, uh, focusing and specializing on React and Node JS. And apart from those things, I also work on. Uh, um, so this is my day job. So I work full stack on uh, some on this company um, in a bank right now. And I've been working with uh, a couple of uh, technologies in React and Node. And uh, it's been like more than 10 years I've been working on this part. And now uh, it's it's going really good. Um, so it is one of the top three banks. And I guess Surabhi might know what bank I'm talking about. Starts with L in the UK. <laughs> and uh, okay. So um, yeah. Um, so I keep saying that I'm a full stack developer. Then what is the uh, reason of being a full stack developer without having a website so let me go ahead and share you what i have got and how many people here are a web developers like are you a web developer or you do you want to become a web developer please put it in the chat messages and okay cool so let me share my screen nice so is everyone able to see the screen hopefully yes so this is this is my website and it looks like this. Um, oops, please don't. Yeah, okay. So that's how my uh, website looks like. And this is a small introduction. And then going forward, I'll have a small about myself. Then here is where I introduce to everyone what exactly I'm doing and stuff like that. Then there's a small profile where exactly all my personal details will be and what my skills that are. Everything is outdated so I'll uh, I'll need to update it's been more than two years since I updated my website um, and I have got a quick uh, you know like a, a quick part about my experience then comes the education so in case if you don't have an experience just make sure you put your education there and start writing something on the education part like what does that course do etc so that is mainly for filling up things and for portfolio if you have done even a hello world application just please go ahead and put it so this is something which i did like so many years ago and uh, right now if i see this i'm embarrassed to put this here but still this works right so this is the first product i ever done and apart from that i have a blog i try to scribble a lot of things uh, people talk a lot behind my back this is what people talk about me and if you want to talk to me here is a thing so this is something which i would like everyone to uh, create something on your own like simple basic stuff and all my social media handles are here oh by the way i also have my own youtube uh, channel where i am doing a lot of you know like full stack stuff and uh, uh, you can see you can see a lot of things like for example about react right so i am doing something like solving 30 problems in 30 days and it's going on right now it is going on crazily and uh, I wish you can have a quick look at it and it's it's going really good. Yeah, so it's sure. All about you can send the link in the chat and then we can definitely oh, subscribe to def the channel. Definitely. Thank you. And <laughs> thanks, Nagam. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's, that's the link I have sent you in, all in the chat. And apart from that, okay, I'll also send my website so that you can get inspired and create something awesome. So, right. And apart from these things, uh, yeah, so should we go directly into the React part? Feel free to like unmute yourself and then start talking. Okay, so we will start with something called as Code Sandbox. But before that, I want to give you a quick introduction about React. Okay, so React JS is a library and it is by Facebook. Um, the main reason why React JS came into place is when you are trying to use HTML and CSS in your um, mission like um, in your website or something like that. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. There is a small issue.
Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. So yes, um, when we are when we are working with HTML and CSS, the problem that we are facing is this. So HTML and CSS, you cannot mix and match components. There are like loads and loads of different things that might be like repeated. So the one of the main principles of software development is do not repeat yourself, right? You have like these kind of um, functions, uh, repeatable components, etc., and uh, it helps you in not repeating yourself, which is really great, right? So in HTML, you won't be able to do it. You cannot uh, create a small partial where you can. So for example, I'll just give you a small uh, detailed thing. So can someone say what is your favorite website or something like that? Some some let's say some Indian website. Painkiller and programming <laughs> Netflix. Netflix is not an Indian website. I'm talking about some kind of like a corporate website or something like a, a normal website that contains like five to six pages or something like that. OK, let's let let me check government of India website. OK, I know I shouldn't use this, but um, any other better ideas, better suggestions? W3 schools. OK, um, nittr.ac.in. I believe that's your university or college. OK, so wow, that's a really nice website, like simply putting a small letter on my face. <laughs> what a UX. OK, now if you see this particular page, this might contain some kind of like a, a back end technology. So if you see any pages here, let's take five to six pages here. Uh, let's go with uh, some of these pages. OK, now if you see this, you can see something that is uh, common between these pages. OK, so let's open this. Let's open this. Let's open this. OK, so if you see this, this is the home page. This is the uh, some annual report page. This is applied geology page. This is uh, civil engineering page. If you see all these four pages, you can see that the top part is completely the same static thing. And if you see the bottom part, it is also the same static thing. So there is not much differences between these things other than the design is also wrong. So these are some issues that are happening. For example, this is not consistent with all the other pages. This has some visitor info. It has this last updated info, but here it is missing. And in this page, it is actually broken. So now there are so many inconsistencies. And if you need to update uh, let's say this anti-ragging system. Oh, it should be anti-ragging team or something like that. I need to go through every single page and I need to update in case if it is a, just the front end HTML based website. This uses PHP. Uh, so I believe this should be using some kind of WordPress or something like that. If that is the case, then there will be a lot of like, uh, it's not using WordPress. So in that case, it will be having a lot of, um, you know, partials and kind of things that is server side technology so server side what it does is it has a real big application that runs and then it kind of like combines files and then delivers to you got it so in that way uh, the server side technologies are perfect but coming to the client side technologies for example if you are using jsbin sorry um, if you are using a simple website like this a html website like this which has a header and we say like uh, hello world or something like this and let's put h1 in front of it. Let's have a hello world as a header and there is a footer. We have, there's a paragraph which says copyright, ampersand copy, and I put 2010 here. Then I need to every single year I go and change this 2010 into 2011 in every single pages, right? So these kind of things are repeated stuff. But unfortunately, in HTML, you won't be able to update all those things. Welcome to React. React was created just to solve this problem. So this is actually a component based library and you can do a lot of things. You just need to write only one. Uh, you need to change only at one place and you can sh see the whole stuff changing in all the places. So that's completely about uh, why what React is and um there are like loads and loads of things in react so i'll give you a quick idea of how to start it with start working on react and setting up your development environment okay so now um i want you all to check this out if i type in praveen dev environment on google the first link i will be getting is this pers my personal development environment so this is the site 
this is this is one of my blog posts where i have uh, uh, used a lot of things here okay so this has google chrome google chrome is one of the best browsers that i have ever seen how many of you know about google chrome's um, chrome dev tools web developer tools how many of you not heard of it how many of you have not heard of it just say i have not heard of it or no in the chat okay so there is some people have not heard not heard not heard okay there is only one person you will be completely amazed so uh, nagam uh, can you tell me uh, a news website that you know of that you can trust i want to show you a small thing any news websites stack overflow is not a news website bro <laughs> okay let me go to times of india okay so let's if if we go to times of india this is the main uh, 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 news website it's it's a news website in india and uh, let's say i accept everything so there is a top news here okay so what i'm going to do is um, i can just go ahead right click it inspect this element and say like uh, uh i put like nagam wins the trophy in the covid hackathon or something like that okay so look at this so this is something which we generally do to check whether how the website looks with different contents so you can actually take a screenshot and say like see see i got a trophy and stuff like that and things so i can also go to like you know find a trophy link so, so trophy image so let me go to the images okay this is a nice image which i can use it's blurred and that's it looks good okay so open this image in a new tab i'll be able to get this whole complete uh, uh, you know this one and then if i try to go back to this inspect element part i can just go ahead there is this src file here boom cool look at this so you can say that you are in the first page of times of india website so this is the power of chrome dev tools um this is the developer tools this is the dev tools and it has a lot of features so you you can go ahead get into this elements and all these things and then try to do something about it uh, you can change it you can do a lot of things okay and uh, also the the great part about this is you can see how the website comes in the live in different devices for example let's say you are uh, okay say you don't have a, a mobile like this you are obviously i am not that rich to have all these mobiles but in the whole world people use all these mobiles right and if you want to have your website displayed in every mobile you cannot just go ahead and purchase every single mobile so there are some people who use moto g4 so how does it uh, look in moto g4 so i can i can quickly preview what it how it looks or something like that so let me fit to window so this is how it looks in the moto g4 and if i open galaxy s5 it looks like this if it is pixel to excel it looks like this um iphone it looks like this ipad it looks like this if i if i change the dimension it looks like this like you know from uh, uh this way to that way like so it it immediately also shows me open app as if i am in an ipad you get it right so these are the different things that i can do using chrome dev tools so google chrome is one of the best for all the web developers and apart from these things we have got like couple of extensions as well so one of the main extension again this is not updated one of the main extensions that i generally use is this react dev tools so react dev tools will help you in um, you know like trying to understand how this react page is created and stuff like that you have zoom okay leave all these things let's directly go into node js so what is node js hey sorry i'm am i going too fast or uh, is everyone able to follow me can you please say something some kind of a feedback yeah i think the speed is pretty good thanks so right when anyone says javascript the only thing that comes to our mind is 
okay it is going to run on a browser and you need a browser to run it uh, works with html that's all we think right so but actually what we can do is we can use um, node js to run um, javascript out of browsers so ja node js is a platform this is similar to our java runtime environment where uh, you can you can write it in the java code and then it gets run everywhere right whether it is your refrigerator or whether it is your laptop or whether it is your phone everywhere java runs using the runtime environment called java runtime environment the same way there is something called a clr it is for dotnet dotnet common language runtime so like that we have node js which is the runtime for javascript so whatever you are writing for example even this this particular um, blog my blog is running on ghost ghost is also based out of node js now one thing which i wanted to show you so if i say uh, let's let's clear these things on the console something that is only working with javascript okay so what would be the answer of 1 plus 2 do you think yeah node.js runs on backend as well uh, i'm just gonna ask you the answer of one plus two i know this is a very basic question but please someone respond okay i could get a lot of responses saying three okay now what would be the answer of point one plus point two come on i need a quick answer after this we are going to okay everyone says point three so let's try it out. 0.1 plus 0.2, right? You see this number. Welcome to JavaScript. <laughs> so we can see that this is what is coming here. So the same way, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open my terminal. This is my terminal. Okay. Uh, I hope everyone is able to see it. I'm putting it as big as possible. Cool. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. So instead of using these things, so let's say if I go to, uh, um, let me go to downloads. So I'm putting like console.log 0.1 plus 0.2. The same way I'm putting another console.log 1 plus 2, okay? And then I'll save it as save and then I'll run it with node. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boom. Same answers. So we are we are looking at the same thing right now. Correct? So Node.js as well as Chrome uses the same JavaScript engine, which is called as V8 JavaScript engine. And uh, that's how JavaScript actually works. There is a huge reason behind why this number comes up. It is a big IEEE paper. It's something related to the exponents and a lot of things. Okay, now let's cut all these things and let's get into our main topic of React.js. So that's that's about Node.js. So we need Node.js to run the React.js stuff because uh, a lot of packages, we have like uh, a lot of packages and those packages are uh, going to be run by node.js that is the reason we need node.js and finally we have visual studio code this is the best thing ever microsoft has done for us so visual studio code looks like this and uh, this has a couple of extensions and i'll uh, check show you what are all the extensions and what they do so this is a theme so we can just leave this theme then we have got this particular thing okay how many of you are lazy like me I'm extremely lazy. So how many of you will say that you are lazy? <laughs> so uh, I'm a lazy person and I'll tell you what exactly this does. So let's say, um, let me first uh, set the syntax as uh, uh, JavaScript, React. And so if I need a class component, all I need to do is boom, that's it. Yeah, Microsoft has bought GitHub too. There is nothing we can do about it. Okay, so here we have got a class component within few seconds. And uh, the next thing is if I need a functional component, I can also do one thing like this. I've got a React functional component in a quick second. So this is something which I always uh, 
um, you know, like trust on and stuff like that. So this is what this does. And we have like other things like ES lint and prettier. So let's say we have got a crazy JavaScript function or a syntax here. A is equal to, let's say, let me put a function um, B. Uh, we can do function D and uh, B and C. B, C, then we can open something and we will give a return. Then uh, we'll put something like this with a A dot map and we can put A, um, open an A and put something like this. Okay, now if I just copy and paste, paste it over here, look at this, it has actually removed the parenthesis here. It has done a lot of changes here it did it in a better way in a human readable way so that is what um, es lint and prettier does for you then we have git lens git lens is one of the awesome thing which i wanted to tell so what happens is look at this every line when you see this you can see who exactly did it and when they did it not only that it also shows you the whole uh, git commit history on all these things this git history you don't require github to look into you don't need a github.com or something like that. Everything is there inside your terminal or IDE itself. So that is the reason I love this uh, VS Code a lot now. I guess this is the only product from Microsoft I like. Okay, now last thing for you all, uh, last thing in the sense before React, there is, this is the last thing I'm gonna show. Um, let us say in simple HTML, HTML and CSS. So before that, I'll uh, just change it into HTML. In HTML and CSS, what I want you all to do is just by putting HTML alone, tell me how long will you take to do something like this? So this is a header tag. Okay, sorry about my handwriting. When I try to write it using my mouse, it's gonna go crazy. Uh, this is a logo. And we have some navigation links. Okay, I'll say you what is there inside this. Inside the header, we have a H1 tag. Inside the H1 tag, we have a A tag. And inside the A tag, we have this logo here. Okay, so now um, I've got four links in the nav. Okay, nav one, nav two. So we have three and four. Now this one is made up of this way, okay? There is a nav tag. There is a UL tag. There is a LI tag. There is A tag. And these two things are there into four, four times. Okay, so how long do you think you will take to write the C, uh, HTML code alone for this? Just doc type HTML, HTML head, title, uh, meta tags if there are any, uh, then body, body inside header, header inside H1, H1 inside A, A inside logo, then after the H1 you need to write nav, UL, LIA, LIA, LIA and LIA. So how long do you think it will take you? Just give me your approximate rough time and wait for the magic. So I'm just gonna wait for till, wait at least. Okay, Nagam says like 20 minutes, cool. Anyone else? 15 to 30 minutes, great. Decent time. Okay, Surabhi, are you still there? Hey, how long do you think it will take? I mean, I'm not sure whether you are a technical person. How, I didn't ask much about you. You are a data science person, right? So how much, uh, with just this HTML alone, just the HTML part, how long do you think will it take for you? Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Any other numbers? Now watch. Shall we just see the magic now? <laughs> Great. So um, let it struck correctly zero here. Okay. Start. So I've got the doc type done. So I'm just gonna put uh, hey GSS, so C or sorry, GS, and then I'm gonna put a header tag. Inside the header tag, I want a H1, a link which says logo. Along with it, I want a nav tag. Inside the nav tag, I have UL. Then I have got four list items. Each one has a A which says nav one, two, three, and four. 
20 seconds. How many of you would like to be lazy like me? <laughs> Excellent. So, so this is called as emmet, and this is this is something that we will always use a lot of times. And uh, all I did was this part, and that got transformed into whatever you saw here. So, if I put a dollar, boom. So, what exact the good part about this is, I can even go be between these things. So, if I want to go put a slash here or something like that, and then go here, this is now one, then this is now two, something like that. So, I can go back and change it to now one dot HTML and those kind of things. Not only that, if I want to give something better, so I can just select all these things. I'm going to put like dot dot slash nav, copy it hyphen one two three four dot html go boom how is this so this is called as um this is called as multi multi cursor or vertical cursor moment so this is available in almost all these uh good uh, you know like ides and uh, i'm using my mouse and the middle mouse button to perform these things okay now let's go ahead and start looking into what exactly, how exactly you need to start with React. Okay, sorry, I've been taking a long time to show you all the tips and tricks that I generally use. Uh, let me remove all these drawings. Cool. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is go to nodejs.org and get the LTS version of this step one. So once you get that, you have got Chrome as well as Node.js, then get the Visual Studio code and install all the extensions, uh, the eight extensions that I have got. So you just need only five extensions out of this, ES7 uh, for being lazy, ES Lint for corrections, Git history for not going to Git or GitHub, Git Lens is uh, just for, um, I mean, it's, it's just a supercharged thing for laziness again. Prettier, again being lazy, five, that's it. Nothing else. You don't need to do three VS Code icons or this Cobalt too. Okay. So now coming back to our stuff. So let me try to open a new folder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll directly just go create a new folder here. Let me go to the trash, delete everything. So uh, I'll just go create a new folder here, which says um, hello or something like that. And boom. So now I got this hello folder. I don't even need this folder now. Okay. Now the next thing what I'm going to do is uh, here, I'm just going to open this terminal. Okay. So in the terminal, I've got hello here. And uh, if I need to initialize something, I can also do that. Okay. Let's do one thing. Let me delete this folder actually. And um, I'll show you using Git and GitHub so that you can also uh, take it home. Like for example, if I'm, whatever I'm doing right now, you can actually take it with you. So I'm just gonna create a new repository here with no template or anything. I hope everyone knows GitHub, right? Is there anyone who doesn't know what GitHub is? You can travel back in time with the codes. That is the main thing. So I'm gonna say GS React intro. It's a public repository part of Praveen's live stream with GS. And I'm not selecting anything and then I'm creating a new repository here. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and then paste it over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm also going to put my username on front of here and then copy it. Now, if I go back to this, I can close this one. If I go to, okay, let me quit this, open a new window. In this new screen, I go, I get two things. Either I can open a folder, I can clone a repository. So I'm just gonna click on clone a repository. Don't get diverted by seeing this clone from GitHub. I'm just gonna paste this link. Once I paste this link, it will say clone from URL. I'm just gonna click on clone from URL on my downloads folder. I'm gonna select the repository location. It's gonna open it automatically. It's gonna clone it automatically from GitHub to 
my local and then once i open it i've got this whole complete setup i don't need any of these uh, i just need only my browser and vs code right now okay now i go to my terminal so we have a couple of commands to run here okay the first command is something about node have you got your node js installed that is the first thing so if i type in n o d e hyphen v i will be getting like version 10.19.0 so that is what i have got and if i try to use npm hyphen v uh, this is for checking the node package manager so you should get npm and npx hyphen v giving the same outputs so 6.13.4 is the same thing so what is exactly npm versus npx so since surabhi is here i'm going to quickly ask her one thing uh, surabhi when you install your software what do you what all steps do you follow can you tell me any software um first of all we just check the documentation of how to install the software okay if it's straightforward you can just do it from the terminal just to pip install no i'm install. i'm talking about like simple let's let's talk about a simple windows based installation that oh, kind of yeah, software yeah yeah just install the download the zip file or yes. download the dmg and just uh cover up all the steps which are required next, 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 next. and then, uh, then make sure that it's installed and then what would you do with the original dmg or the setup file uh just eject it delete it right so that's exactly what npm npx does so npm is mainly for installing packages okay so you can do npm install a package for example install package name and then you can run the package by using package name then parameters and then in case once you have used this package you don't need it anymore you can do npm uninstall the package name but what npx does is all these three things npx package name params okay so the package name params is what we will be running like double clicking on the setup file and stuff like that right so here the package name is going to be uh, create react app so create react app and the params is going to be the which directory that we are going to install so since we are going to install in the current directory we should be using dot here okay so is this clear everyone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do npx npx means node package executor so let's put npx create react app and press enter this will take a long time okay so this is going to take a huge long time uh, depends on your um, internet connection your uh, computer speed everything okay i am currently on a mac machine it's an old mac machine it is 2015 late 2015 model and uh, that time it was the high end one so yeah so it takes couple of minutes here and how many of you are using mac how many of you are using windows how many of you are using ubuntu linux etc what operating system are you all using can you just comment it out mac hi five <laughs> there is nothing else we can get here <laughs> okay windows. a lot of people have given windows what is the windows version that you are using like is it windows 7 10 windows 8 okay 10 10 10 10 10 microsoft is like ruling everywhere okay looks like just we both are uh, using mac then is it though is there no players using a mac is there anyone who is using a mac or ansh just now i told you ansh this is the difference between npm and npx where were you <laughs> okay is there anyone who is using uh, mac ubuntu linux anything other than windows okay the main reason why i asked this windows is not actually good with um, um you know uh, def you know development part so all these things are basically done for unix based system like mac and linux so that's the main reason so you might get some get problems and stuff like that okay now let's what we are going to do is once you have got art if you are going for a development based machine blindly go for mac 
in case if you can afford that is also there there is an affordability thing as well but uh, i would suggest go with the older version of mac the uh, what do you call this intel based processor mac because m1 mac is kind of like um, i'm not convinced with the way the things are going on with m1 mac i have an m1 mac i have an intel based mac go with an i7 processor based mac which is really good for your development purposes see what is there in windows you should you should say like you have like lot of software that you can use with compatibility you can anyway use a virtual machine i've got like a windows 7 virtual machine and windows 10 virtual machines so um you can use your external hard disk in case if you need more uh, um more memory or data so never worry about it you will you'll have it perfectly but why do you say that the m11 ones are not as good as the intel ones uh recently i have seen a lot of uh, software getting crashed due to no reason for example vs code has been crashing a lot in m1 max with compared to my mac so my mac i have never seen uh, my uh, i have never seen my mac crashing at all uh, see and another thing is m1 is just like this is the first generation apple has come up with an arm based processor so um when you, when it comes to this microprocessor kind of things um we have two architectures right one is the big endian and uh, one is the little endian so i guess uh, intel uses big endian and uh, motorola uses something called as arm architecture which is which uses little endian and uh, now that is the reason motorola processors are very uh, cheaper compared to intel processors and uh, they have their own version of all the instruction sets everything is totally different m1 is using that that is the reason I a lot of that. software might not be compatible with it that is one of the things so we have just created this whole whole thing uh, and we don't need all these things so uh, now it says success we have created this gs react intro at in this place inside this directly you can directly start the application by using npm start so what i would do is i'll just open up a browser and type in npm start and then wait for the development server to run and build it look at this you have got something running right now so i'm just going to do a split screen of these two things so it's going to say welcome to react or something like that you just need to edit the src/app.js and save to reload so if i if i go here and uh, type in src slash app dot js boom this is the application file i get so i'm going to say like uh, girl script and save it the moment i save it it automatically reloads there is there are two different components in this which actually helps in reloading the whole thing so if you see here in the inspecting uh, um, you know like uh, in the console you can see there are two things hmr and wds hmr is called as hot module reloading and wds is webpack dev server so these are the two things that actually help in um how do you call this um webpack dev server is the one which actually sets you up this server and the hmr is the hot module reloading which actually reloads the whole stuff okay so these are the two things that are mainly helping you in achieving this part so whenever you want to change something it is going to be extremely quick in uh, you know whatever you write here it's going to show it here like that okay so that's that's one thing and uh, basically this is react Uh, this is how you start with react and you don't want to write any kind of like code that's why we have something like create react app which is a boilerplate and it writes all the code for you okay any questions so far so now i can also do uh, a commit message here saying like uh, created created boiler um react app using cra okay so that's something which i did and i'm just doing it one every time like uh, one every one every moment okay just give me one second don't get ignored just want to check something okay fine cool 
so the next thing that we are going to see is there are different types of components that are there in react so far do you have any questions i'm going to show you how the folder structure looks like right now okay so if we just try to reveal this in finder we can see that there are so many files here so we are mainly concentrating on the src folder okay inside the src folder there are so many files really we don't know what file does what so we will create a couple of folders starting with components styles assets services tests okay so these are the basic five different folders i will create and each and every file most of the files will go there except three files i'll tell you what three files are okay app.css should technically go to the styles but it's going to go to the trash can now app.js is a common the moment and also when i change any file you can see that it is going to say fail to compile blah 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 because uh, it keeps on looking at all your files and immediately tries to compile and do something out of it okay so the look at this this is now it's going to change the content as well i'm going to put this into components again it's going to say i cannot find app.js so this is a test file i'm going to put it into the test index.css go to trash index.js stay there logo.svg technically it should go to assets now it goes to trash so everything is cleared don't touch these three files these three files are very important for react to work okay and uh, we have actually changed a couple of files right now we have deleted a couple of files we have changed a couple of files so what we will do is we will just go to our uh, um index.js folder file because that is where the problem comes up starting with so we will remove the index.css from here and this app is no more here so we will use dot slash components slash app okay uh, then it says again inside the app.js we can't find something okay right i don't need this whole thing so i'm just going to put rcc and then create a class component so this is how you create a react class component so the way you create us you need to import you don't need to import react nowadays for from the latest versions but let's follow the uh, you know like flock um, you need to import the react library then you need to import this component part and then you need to create a class that it's a class component this is a class component extends this component and we have a render function that renders the html part so this is not a javascript thing this is actually a jsx so now i want to use a an app class here so a div with a class name called app and i'm going to say hello girl script and then if i save it and if i go to this part you can clearly see that it works fine okay so this is the basic way of how you can create a react application so um now we have organized reorganized all the files and removed the clutter reorganized and removed the clutter any questions so far so this is a class component what exactly is a class component it is a big component which has a lot of features there are two different types of components one is a class component and one is a functional component so what is the difference between oh look at this this is what gitlens does so it immediately shows me all these things and if i click on this one it will actually link to the github part but since we haven't pushed any code it doesn't do it right it also has this discussion also discuss or collaborate with other people using comments or something like that okay so this is this is really cool the next thing that we will be doing is what is a functional component let's try to create a header.js which will we will do it as a functional arrow com, arrow function component so this is react arrow function component with export okay we created a header here we want to use something like this uh before writing anything here i thought i will include bootstrap css so to include any external css we will go to this public index.html file this is the place where we will be able to change all these things so if i try changing this one just give me one second So 
so if if i see this one like we can uh, we can change all the headings and other things like let's say um my first react app and then i save it it shows me here then i'm also going to go to bootstrap cdn how many of you know bootstrap so this is bootstrap a hey, cool this is one of the most favorite most used um css frameworks available and if i try to include that i will be including it using a link tag and when i paste it i'll be able to see that it has actually changed a couple of things okay along with that um yeah so so i've done that part let's save it i'm going to put this as added bootstrap now coming back to header being another lazy person what i did is i looked into the bootstrap code and then i copied the header part alone and converted it into a functional component so if you go to github.com/pravinsign/react bootstrap component is it uh, bootstrap react helpers this fold this particular repository we can see a lot of things that i might use a lot so i did this headers so i'm just going to copy this one and i'll just put everything here so now i've got this header so what i have done is i just took this header part uh, which is there in the bootstrap so it it takes in two two to three props one is the dark prop one is the children prop and one is the class name prop um everything is uh, except children everything is actually um optional and class name in case if you want to add additional class names dark when you give dark as true it is going to set the dark value as dark if you give dark as false or falsy value it will going to give us light now this particular uh, structure should be known for people who are using bootstrap you need to use navbar navbar dark or navbar light bg dark or bg light and along with that you need to add the class name as well then you need to use the span class navbar brand and then you need to type something here so that it becomes the header so right now we have got only uh, hello girl script here uh, what i'm going to do is what i'm going to do is i'm going to create uh, quickly add a header tag here so if i type in header here uh it is not actually showing me correctly i'm going to close and restart maybe no uh, let let's try again okay it's not actually showing me suggesting me so header should come from this particular thing uh, so i'm going to import the header okay so now if i try to use header here so it's going to show me something like this and i'm going to put a little script and how many of you would like it to be a light background and i can even give a class name here so class name this is again another thing which we used so i'm going to give mb4 so that i'm getting some spaces space below it so if i go back to our index.html as well after this i want to put a style tag which says for every thing i want to use font family as open sans yeah that looks good so um how many of you want a dark header how many of you want a light header i think light dark light okay okay now what i'm going to do is so um let's write a couple of things okay so we have got this one uh this is girl script light then we have girl script dark we can give a class oops class name as dark oh, sorry sorry so not class name dark as true then we can have another thing dark as false which says um slim or something like that slim light something like this and if i save it see 
all i changes a small part and then immediately the content and the theme completely gets changed that is the power of react so react will be able to help you with componentization and you don't need to repeat everything here so if i want to add a this is in front of everything all i need to do is go to this header page and add something like this is and then save it look at it everywhere i got it added it's just pure front end i have not used any server side components if i didn't build it and put it on github pages or something like that i can immediately use everything okay not just that uh there's one more thing which i wanted to show there is something since we are using a class component we can make use of states states are local to the components some kind of a data okay this data is local to the component so we are putting dark as false at the moment and instead of using these things i'm just going to use just curl script and this dark value right i'm just going to get it from the state okay this dot state dot dark okay now here i'm going to put um five i'm going to put a button click center button dot btn dot btn primary um and i'm going to give toggle dark theme or something like this okay i get something like this like a button simple thing okay now i'm also going to create a handler handle toggle okay so there is an event involved in it and then uh, i'll just put event dot prevent default i don't want the button to like refresh the page and i'm also setting the state using set state so set state actually re-renders the whole component if you are using it and i'm going to put dark as not this dot state dot dark so whatever is there inside the state i'm going to re rechange that okay now connecting this um thing to the button all i need to do is i just need to put on click and then i just use handle toggle okay it automatically puts this dot in front of mine because of vs code okay shall we try this boom in simple ways you can achieve a lot of things using react that's exactly what this does so that's a class component this one just this um, just this header is a functional component so we saw the difference between class component and functional components functional components are those just that just gets the input and shows something as the output class components they are a bit complicated they have their own states and they can send data to others i mean everyone can send data to other components uh, this can have its own data changed and then sending it to other people so that also works so that's very basic introduction about react and how you can use react in like a lot of different ways and with that being said i also have this complete big playlist which i'm doing it daily like um, every single day uh, yesterday day before yesterday uh, two days ago like today also there is one coming in and uh, so this is 30 days of react and uh, um, surabi i have a proposal for you can you be a co-host of this for me on one episode, please? Sure. When is the episode? You can. Uh, we can decide about it. So go ahead. Whoever wants to be a co-host, here it is. Co-host with me. Just go on. Just just come in and get yourself on this. And uh, we are we are we have like lot of topics that can be covered along with some topics that can be decided by you as well there are lo loads of other um, uh, new people who are coming here and all the videos are here so uh, this is the complete playlist as of now and we have completed six days so far and uh, i don't know how many of you know uh, this person he's uh, eddie jody he's one of the github stars and uh, that's that's oh, exactly that's really happening cool. i love the i love the design of the video and everything thank you i like the zoom layout overlay that's very nice it is actually yeah. zoom but along with I it know. i have added a lot of you know photoshop giddy and stuff like that yeah i mean i have a youtube channel as well so when i had the zoom when i had a zoom call with someone i did the same thing but i oh, did wow. it on camera so hey, 
come on i'm also using canva <laughs> okay canva cool. is life saving it's so good it is really good like it's a gr- great alternate for photoshop but look at me i have a small aura glow right those kind of things are not possible yeah, using canva true, i true. had to use photoshop it's very hard to do that on canva i've always tried to do it but i thought that only the people who are the apple pens so they are able to do it oh. properly <laughs> with apple uh, the outline properly you know right i but, used yeah. photoshop and canva both together to do this for example these things are all canva but these things are all photoshop so it's it's a team effort <laughs> yeah. i'm just going to play this uh, trailer it's a 4 minute trailer and i guess we can finish there after yeah. that hey everyone hi everyone eddie you're here so would you be interested in learning react uh, not really react is you know it's a toy <laughs> it's not a real project um really okay it is really popular amongst the community awesome so here's the deal so i'm going to solve 30 different use cases that are crazily crazy in practical ways on react through my hands on live streams every single day what do you think about that your live streams are always really fun and engaging and i always enjoy to tune in and watch them and uh, Not only that I'm going to also welcome students who want to co-host along with me and this would be the f- for a lot of people this would be the first time so it's going to be very helpful for them to like you know uh it's going to be like a hybrid experience because some people are completely stage fear and uh, some people will be happy to go for a live stream like in the live real experience so we are adapting to that and they can become a budding youtubers what do you say I think that is your biggest strength actually. I really like that. You bringing on guests who aren't necessarily experts or, you know, Hollywood movie stars. I really love it how you bring everyone. You really welcome everybody. I think that is actually even more important and better than the react part. That's why I tune in to all your live streams. It's because you always have such awesome guests who are really authentic. Thank you, Eddie. And not only that, this thought came from you you keep saying me that i have to be inclusive and moreover i come from india chennai south india where women in tech is completely very less and one more thing is i want the free education for everyone it should be high quality tech education and it should be available for free so i thought let me do something from my part and here you go I think that is just such a good idea. I really enjoy this and you do so many. I've seen you do like two live streams in a single day with two different guests. It is epic and you're doing such a great job. I know you're going to explode in 2021. I don't want to explode, but yes, I have done at a maximum of 5 live streams a day and yes, that's tiring as well. So that's about my YouTube channel. Two things: free, high quality tech education for everyone and more women and tech in india south india and everywhere and edi you do have your awesome youtube channel why don't you talk about that i do have a channel that focuses on open source and being inclusive and getting everybody into open source so if that sounds interesting to you head over to my channel and i also geek out with you in on praveen's live stream i'll be there in the chat to say hey as well now you have to keep up your promise so let's do a pilot session very soon let's decide the date soon i let the dates written in the comments below and we are going to start this 30 days of react and you are the chief guest starting kick starting the pilot session how does that sound i'm so honored to be the first person on this series this awesome series that you're doing so thank you so much for having me i really looking forward to seeing what we can talk about and also what the rest of the series holds for the community well done and good luck yeah so we are meeting soon we have our pilot session with eddie now the github star the open source god on february first or second week let's decide and oh by the way if you are interested please check out the playlist and subscribe to it too and if you want to be a co-host connect with me more details in the description and eddie any last words I think loads of people should definitely tune into your live streams, subscribe to your channel and also share it with their friends and if they want to be a guest even if they're a bit nervous, 
Praveen is a is a great host and he'll make you feel right at home and you're all welcome to join him which I think is great. Hey don't forget subscribe to Eddie's channel as well please. And see ya. Bye. That's what about it. I'd love to be a part of it. <laughs> Finally convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I I did something similar on my channel as well trying to bring other people on it and trying to share their experiences on the platform so that other people can get to know about their uh, different experiences and everything it's really nice cool 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 and uh, I learn a lot from them as well so um, when someone who is completely new to technology or new to uh, so if you know something some other people will have a different level of knowledge let it be less or let it be more they will definitely teach you even if they are uh, less than what you think like for example you know you have like five years of experience but that person has only one year of experience and completely new to this technology um, they will ask crazy questions which makes you think oh wow you can even do this way so they have other ways they have they can contribute to like their thoughts might be different you might have been like okay this is how i should do this is how i should do they will come and say like okay why don't you do this way this is easy right and you will say oh yeah i'm so dumb for the past four years i've been doing the same way why can't i do this way yeah great so a learning can be done in a lot of different places and uh, that's a clear example i'm a clear example so i've been learning a lot from new people really and uh, thanks everyone for having me here. So that is something which I wanted to say for the community. Thank you so much for coming. I think it was a really intense and nice session and uh, people can definitely learn a lot. If anybody has any questions, do shoot them in or you can definitely reach out to him personally. All the links are in the chat and I'm going to put this on YouTube so you can always have a look at it. Sure. I'm also going to give my uh, LinkedIn uh, link and also I'm going to give my website link. And finally, this is my YouTube link as well. Yeah, I just subscribed. So <laughs> you. that's that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And uh, any other questions? Thanks everyone for attending. And uh, I hope everyone had got a good idea about what react is how awesome it is so uh, uh, the basics of react and you can go ahead with those 30 days of co uh, react so that from the day one i have been like doing these small small things i took small small problems to solve it so that you will have a uh, idea um uh, thanks prasad uh, for nagam uh, I have been uh, using React even before it was uh, released to the general public. So that's a funny story that happened like uh, four years ago. Is it four years or five years? 2014. So 2015, what I did is I created a similar something similar to Facebook and I released it for my uh, project dissertation. And uh, that point of time, uh, Facebook was releasing something called after my dissertation and after I got my dis degree here in the UK, uh, Facebook released something called as at workplace by Facebook. I was like, hey, that was my uh, project. That's you have copied me something like with a lot of smileys. I tagged Facebook. Someone from the legal team approached me and asked me what exactly happened. Did we do anything wrong or something like that? And I explained like, see, there are like a couple of cat smileys there. Do you think that is still very serious? No, I just was saying a joke, but this is, this is exactly what I did. And it's almost similar. I did it using PHP completely, not what you did. And uh, this, I did like in three months time as a single person, they were pretty much impressed with what I did. And they uh, invited me over to Facebook headquarters in London. And uh, that's where I came to know there is something called as JSX. And uh, we started working with that. And wow, how can you even mix JavaScript and XML? Yuck, this is something the worst thing ever. And then after one week, I left the Facebook campus and I came back to home. And after a week's time, I started feeling this, okay, I feel like what Facebook is doing is right. It looks really nice. Um, for some reason, it is it is correct. And um, Okay, let, let me try that. And then I fell in love with Facebook as, uh, sorry, React. And uh, that's how I started working with React. Uh, I started in 2014, 
uh, react was released in 2015 for the general public so when i started with react it was jsx now it is react i guess it's more than seven years about seven years i've been using react that's really nice actually that's very interesting thank you wow cool comments really uh amazing session started learn react drop between us lost interest so uh this is that's great art the reason why i'm saying is like uh when someone is teaching you uh a lot of thing is uh, uh i mean like a lot of things depend on the teacher the person who trains you uh that person makes you whether this particular uh, course is interested or not so it has a huge impact uh, thankfully i met some uh, a guy a canadian uh, uh, developer called uh, uh, what is his name west boss and he is like one of the awesomest person ever and uh, he's uh, i met him in person he's such a cool person the moment he handed over me a bag of stickers i fell in love with whatever he did that's it. I'm done. I'm his slave now. So he released a couple of videos and I went through it and his teaching is really good. As an Indian, I'm able to understand his uh, accent and uh, he's, he's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> I keep saying this to everyone. <laughs> and that's I'm really not... nice, actually. It's yeah. so good to, you know, meet different people and learn from them. I think that's the best thing mm. about this, you know, yeah. being able to reach as many people as you can and learn from them yeah cool. i think that's great thank you so much for this session again actually we are having a web development program coming soon in march it's going to be a very basic portfolio building program but maybe we can expand it to react later in the coming months we can even do a portfolio building session as well I'm i think that would be great actually we are having that portfolio building session but it's it's like over a period of two weeks so it's four sessions and we are going to just cover the basics of just putting like a, you know, getting a template and just getting a template and just putting it on GitHub and just kind of like sure. uh, changing the template for people. So we're doing that now, but maybe we can, the second bootcamp can be with regards to uh, React and do that. Like basically. Excellent. Sure. Trying to explore that. So I'm yeah. going to definitely contact you when we do sure. that. And, and Nagam try becoming the CM of uh, sorry not CM PM of India by going into the pmoindia.com or go.in I guess so change those things and take a screenshot and maybe send it to uh, Surabi or someone and uh, she can share it to me I can see that hey, our new PM is Nagam <laughs> yeah that picture it alright I'll stop recording it now